Hey, Steve Basic Architect. Yeah, welcome back. We are inside. I think I'm calling it the Vibe Studio. Let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, Vibe Board has been a game changer, right? I'm Steve Basic Architect. You might have seen me. I'm a contributor on the Build Show Network. Go check it out, buildshownetwork.com. Tons of videos up there too. But uh, we're going to continue our talk about windows. Yeah. Yesterday's video, we talked about window sills. So you know the logical choice. You got it. Window jams. Let's get started. So passive house. Yep. I think this was number four five if i believe in the country it is also close to zero energy it's not quite there but it's very close and we had actually solar hot water up there too if you didn't notice that that's why those three panels are different and that's why we have some pipes happening that interconnect those panels. Now, this was a passive house that I designed in 2009, and we constructed it and certified it in 2010. Um, it is up here in New England. It's in climate zone five. Um, it is also a house literally right on the water. Um, so we had a lot of the wind, high wind um, detailing happening here. You might have seen some of the sheer videos that I did a little earlier, but window jams. Let's talk about them a little bit. Notice here, those windows, those are out. These windows are in, right? Innies and outies. Outies are in the plane of the wall. Innies, they're pushed in a little bit. You can see there, right? They're pushed in that wall in the middle of the wall. Well, there's Somewhat the same detailing, but different risks you're taking, different concerns that are happening there that we can uh, certainly talk about. Um, as a side note, look at how all the windows are protected. All the windows and doors, all right? Let's use an architecture, teaming it up with building science to deliver an exceptional product. One that I tell people it's gonna perform as good as it looks, right? We're not gonna really have to worry about a lot of window leakage here. Although we are, like I said, in a very high wind zone, being right on the edge of the water. So this building is gonna get tortured um, a lot more than say my house here. That is a lot further, you know, a few miles removed from the coast, heavily protected by trees. You know, we're not going to get a lot of rain challenging my windows here like this thing is going to get, right? And the other thing to make note of is, you know, this side, we have a couple windows that and the door, look at here on this side, this, this side here alone, like, I don't know, it's something like 30 to 32% of this wall is glass, right? So it's funny because you have the ocean. You want the view, so you put the house at an extreme risk because where do most walls leak? Well, they leak at the interface of the wall and the window, but because we're on the ocean and that land is extremely expensive and we want to capture the view, then the stakes get much, much higher out here than, like I said, the house I'm sitting in right now. Let's uh, talk a little bit. Innies, outies. You can see them here. Innie. All right. Yeah, we have that dimension right there. I wanted to fold those um, white cedar shingles in. But over here, notice we're pretty much in the same plane of the wall with the windows. Yeah, it's tucked in a little, but that's... A function of the trim and uh, the window frame just sitting in a little bit from the nailing flange. But uh, for all intensive purposes, any and Audi. Now, some people don't go telling me, you know, 
Hey, Steve, we should have called that a midi because it's in the middle of the room. It's really not, or middle of the wall. It's really not in the middle or the inside of the wall. I get it. I'm just trying to keep it crystal clear, black and white, kind of any Audi as opposed to midi, which offers a little bit of a gray area. So you use the semantics you want to use. My video, I get to use what I want to use. Now, one thing I've noticed is also there's second floor or there's wall above that window. Here we have, you know, an overhang and then it comes down and then we get that dimension again. So by the time you get from here, I think this was like 24 inches and this is another eight inches. So this dimension here, 32 inches, the surface of the glass from that roof overhang. So that's really, really good protection there. Um, and then on the inside, you can see here, and like I said, today we're talking about jams. So, you know, we're probably on the order of 12 inches plus or minus there. Nice big sills in the space, but that's when I push that window out, right, for the Audi. If I come over here and I go upstairs, you can see there's the shingles on the outside because they're turned into there. And this being a midi, then this goes down to probably somewhere around eight inches plus or minus on the inside. And you can see we're literally right on the water. Yeah, there's a little jetty there, but on the other side of that, yeah, that's England is the next piece of uh, land you see, um, or Europe in general. So <sighs> pulling that in, yeah, some people like to have the deeper window sills. Some people, hey, I can live with the shallower one. I really like that deep pocket imagery that's happening on the outside, setting those windows in. But uh, let's talk about them. So, you can see here's our window. That's our window frame. And this is a casement. And I can tell because I have the frame here and then the sash is there. And then notice we have one, two, three. So that's our triple glazed window unit. Um, in this case here, we had a cedar siding. You can see there's our trim. Um, our clapboard or lap siding is there. And then we have our one by furring strips there. And we have a couple extra or one extra because we want to be able to catch that trim piece but we also need to catch the uh, cedar siding. Now, very similar to our sill detail. We have our framing member there, and that gets a nice hefty bead of sealant. So we're connecting our zip, in this case, which was our primary primary air barrier. And that gets connected to the framing. The framing then gets connected to here, which in this case was another piece of zip on the inside, even though it was drawn a little shallower there. I know we put zip on there on the inside. So basically what we did was we took this zip and folded it around the corner, right? So that any attachment to this side face of the zip was no different really than attaching it to this. They're both here as well as here are both my primary air barrier for that. Now, one of the interesting things, a lot of people always ask, hey, what should, is the best material for my air barrier? My point is, or my answer always is, one, the one installed right, but two, where are you talking? Because if you look at this, 
yes, this is this zip is my primary air barrier. That zip is my primary air barrier. So isn't this membrane that I fold around the corner, right? Connecting that piece to that piece. So isn't all of this expanding foam sealant. So isn't that window sash. So isn't that those couple gaskets there, my window sash, the seals here and there, and my triple glazed windows. So right in that detail, we have no less than, you know, eight or nine primary air barriers, right? That are functioning to seal up my house nice and tight and comfortable. So turning that, we install the window, right? It gets oversized, our rough opening. It's on the order of about half inch there. And then we get in there and we put back a rod and then we fill that with some expanding foam. Now, I've been getting a lot of comments. Hey, is there anything you do differently? And these details for certain. I would, today, I would have a piece of tape that connects that primary air barrier right to this. And it would be a belt and suspenders approach um, in addition to that. And, you know, we... Obviously, we have the flange here, and then that gets taped. So that would also uh, happen. We just want to do that down on the sill, especially in this situation, being on the water. We'd want to have the ability to uh, drain that water out down on the bottom there. Um, let's take a look over here. All right. So this one here, we moved the window inboard, you know, I mean, if that's five and a half inches, we probably moved it in roughly about six inches. Notice that the window is probably close to the center line of the wall. Now, the energy nerds out there, they're going to suggest that that window be placed somewhere in that middle third, right? And talk about it. But the detail really hasn't changed much. We have our zip here. It gets connected there to the framing there. It turns the corner and comes all the way up like that. We have a membrane that comes across here and goes all the way to a point inside of the window. Right. And then, of course, we have our backer rod. We have some foam sealant there. And then on the outside here, we have our trim piece there. And on the inside, we bring our drywall up and finish it off. Oh, sorry. On the inside, we bring our drywall up on the outside. We have our trim piece. <laughs> Had it backwards there for a second. But, um, I mean, not a whole lot of difference from the sill. And you can see there's some nice gasketry happening inside there. Um, so that the sash, right? Picking out a really good window. And, you know, one of the things in, in doing a passive house, I told you this is a passive house uh, certified house. When you do an air test, the final air test, and let's do this in green, you have to do a positive and a negative test, right? And why do you have to do that? Well, it's mostly because we want to test the windows. And <clears throat> if I do a negative pressure test on this house, and negative pressure, if this is outside and this is inside, a negative pressure test is pulling the sash up against these pieces of weather stripping. And it's basically tightening the house for you by the force of negative pressure. But what happens when I take that and I exert a positive pressure and I wanna push that window away? 
Well, those weather strippings aren't really doing, well, they're still sealing it, but there's no advantage now because I'm trying to push the window away. So the window has to really be a very sturdy sash and the way that it's constructed, usually they're multi-point locks. So you're not just relying on um, two or three hinges down one side of the frame, that it's actually engaging on the other side of that sash frame so that it's holding it in place so that as we do that positive pressure test and this thing wants to swing out, it does it, right? It stays in place. Now, when we tested this, there was a Delta, I want to say it was like five or six. You can go back in some of the previous ones. I know I talked about it. Um, I mean, it was like five or six CFM. There was a difference, but it wasn't a very, very large difference. So the window manufacturer actually did a really good job of building a robust assembly. They just had a problem delivering it, right? So anyways, middle third, you can see those details. If we were to do it again, yeah, we would add the advantage of some tape in here. Um, you know, the backer rod is one of those that um, we used it early on, and I'm thinking we might bring it back a little. One of the issues that we find is when you have that rough opening, guys that, and gals that want to do the expanding foam, well, there's no way to control whether that's one inch or three inches. And the way you do that is... If we insert the backer rod back here and we only leave this as three quarters of an inch, then we can fill that up with the expanding foam and then I get a much more freer cavity. Why do I want a freer cavity? Well, the more air open that cavity is, the more I can use mother nature and gravity to have water fall should it get into that system. Right? I need to block out the air, but the water, I want it to fall down in that system and then go out my sill pan. So, anyways, <clears throat> there you have it. Those are the jam details. You got it. I'm Steve Basic Architect, Build Show Network. Yeah, I'm one of the contributors there. I'm also one of the hosts on the Unbuild It podcast, so go check that out. You can find that on the Build Show Network under podcasts as well as this is the vibe board you know i'm loving this thing and if you're looking for more follow me on instagram linkedin facebook TikTok, and of course you're right here on youtube and you know what i'm gonna say you got it smash that subscribe button until next time i'm steve basic architect this is our first passive house that we're putting in review. Until next time, long live our buildings.